God whose converts cover the earth and seas. My reign knows no limitations. It has no boundaries. My power extends even beyond the graves of men and ships. You don't believe. Listen to this yarn of the sea. <laughs> of course, I know nothing of the ways of ships or the men that sail them. But it seems absurd that a boat as trim-looking as the Beta, riding so placidly there to her boys on the bay, will never sail again. But I'm telling you... Yeah, just so, but I simply don't get it. What's wrong with her? Nothing. She's complete in every detail. A perfectly equipped steam freighter. I'll bite. Why won't she go out again, then? She'll never be able to get a crew. Oh, come now. You may go along the entire waterfront. And if you as much as mention wanting to hire men for the beta, the seamen will suddenly shy off and look at you with scared suspicion and edge away without a word. It's a fact. No pilot will take the beta out. No captain navigate her. No sailor man her. The beta is suspect. She has seen a ghost. Now, oh, a belief in ghosts is a silly superstition. Not as silly as you think. The belief in ghosts dates back to primitive man and had its origin probably in his dreams where his departed kin, friend, or foe again appeared to him. The belief in the return of the dead is as prevalent today as it has been centuries ago. It has played an important part in early religious beliefs, which survive to the present day. Why, the superstitious fears of ghosts among sailors is well known. Well, all right, but how and where did that ship encounter a ghost? Perhaps you will not believe that ships can come up from the bottom of the ocean. Well, of course, if they happen to be submarines. The ghost that the Beta encountered was no submarine. It was a ship which came up from the bottom of the sea where it had been buried for centuries. Well, would you like to hear the story? Here, yeah, you can start right now. Very well, but <laughs> part of the story I will have to leave out because we have yet hopes of finding another boat and trying our luck again. By we, I mean Scotty, Riley, and myself. On our last trip on the Beta, we were already within a few miles of our goal. When the ghost showed up? Yes, that's it. You know, what were you after? Buried treasure on some far-flung island? Well, that's part of the story I can't divulge. I will say, however, that it was a promising venture on which we had embarked, and our destination a far-flung island, as you put it. While I had only gone along for scientific research, Scotty and Riley had greater interests. Well, where did you start from? San Francisco. Besides ourselves, there was a captain, a chief engineer, a scant crew of stokers, and a Chinese cook. We had stood well off from shore for day after day, shaping our course far from the track of navigation and bearing up against our island by a circuitous route. It was on the 13th day out. We had passed the equator long since and had come to that region of the great seas where no ship ever goes. The skipper and I were on the bridge talking. Six bells and the sun has just set. Brought a room to turn around in without stepping on anybody's toes, Mr. Morton. Yeah, what space, what immensity. It seems we are beyond all land, all world of men, alone and forgotten. We're clean out of all charted navigation. It seems like everything leads to nowhere. Oh, but it does. We're not so very far now from our island, Mr. Morton. But do you know, sir, I'd just as leave raise that point of land as soon as convenient. Well, why, Captain? Expecting some weather? The sea is a queer proposition, Mr. Morton. Now look around you. All is calm. The boat's as steady and sound as you'd want it. But just the same, I wish we were in port right now. Well, why do you wish that, Captain? I don't know. I can't put it into words. It's just a feeling that I've got. That there's something that ain't just what it seems. Oh, but that's nonsense, Captain. Yeah, I guess so. Just the same, I've got a sort of a hunch, or whatever you might call it, that something or another is going to bump up pretty blame soon. Huh? there's your dinner call, Mr. Morton. Well, I'm ready for it. Aren't you coming too, Captain? No, not this evening. I'll lead on the bridge. Well, excuse me then, Captain. I'll go down and join my friend. Certainly. Well, gentlemen, this will very likely be our last night on this confounded lonesome ocean. At least for a while. According to our skipper, we should sight our island before morning. And how did you enjoy the trip so far, Marky, be boy? Well, 
Your island will certainly be a great relief. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is kind of lonesome out here. But think how much more lonesome that island must feel, having had no ship cast anchor off its shores for centuries. You haven't forgotten the story I told you, Morty, have you? No, indeed, Scotty. I often think of it. And of the fate which befell the ship that called there some 200 years ago. Those poor devils. All set to sail home after having gotten all they went after. Only to be overtaken by such a horrible death. The record they left is too vague. Nevertheless, if any plague still exists on that island after these centuries, we at least come prepared. Well, let's finish our drinks on deck, gentlemen. Phew, there doesn't seem to be any air at all staring down here. Right hole, let's go. It is unusually sizzling and clammy this evening. Yes, we call it earthquake weather in San Francisco. You would bring that up, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, put the drinks down here, cook. And fetch another bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do sit there. I bling them. How quick the night comes along in these waters. The sun had only just set when I left the skipper, and now the moon is already out, making it almost as light as dusk. And the stars seem nearer here than I've ever seen them. Oh, look. Oh, what's that? See, there. Why, 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 why the circle of light. Burning about the top of the mast. I'll be jiggered. Sit down, most fire. A corpus in the society's call it. Now that's funny. These electrical displays are common enough in the southern waters. But I've never seen them except during a storm. There, it's gone. Maybe it was a foreboding. That's the second crack from you. For a landsman, you have all the superstitious instincts of a sailor. Another remark like that, Marty, me boy, and we'll chuck you to the porpoises. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll say no more, then. The water is too fiery to suit me. There's sulfur enough in there to make you think of hell. <laughs> oh, oh, what was that, was it? It seemed to me as if the boat had a light. It still for all the world as though we'd scraped over a shoal of rocks. That's either a whale sliding along our keel, or the earthquake that Marty predicted. Now, don't you blame me. Get a cast to the land. We stopped. Grounded, I bet. Sail ho! A ship! Where? Come on the bridge! There! There, you see her? Not a half a mile away! Shades of Columbus! What kind of ship is this? It's an illusion! It's a derelict! Look, the masts are lighted! She's a blooming carpus in again! What ship is this, Captain? I don't know. She rolls up out of the sea on that last flash, like a pillar of fire, suddenly. What is it? What are the stokers doing on deck? Ah, they're frightened. The shaft's gone. Broke? Yes, sir. We're grounded. Look! That dreadful apparition is coming toward us. You were mistaken about it. The current sets her towards us. She's coming fast. We'll have to rig the sails, Captain. Yeah, and where might your wind be, mister? Well, she's almost upon us. Good God. Turn the light to the ghost. Oh, 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 for heaven's sake, don't stop. You've got me all worked into a sweat of excitement. The fact that you are here and the bait is riding her boys proves that you weren't run down. What happened? I'm no coward, but this thing was too much for me. It was positively creepy. There in the silence of that empty ocean in the queer half-light of the tropic night was this soulless, blind, dead ship coming toward us. Was a promise like an avenging spirit. I saw her plainly, saw her rotten planks, the crumbling rigging. She was covered with coral and rock and seaweed that clung to her like a shroud. She made no sound. No single thing stirred aboard her, but she moved steadily and swiftly directly toward us. Us who were helpless to get out of the way. Stumbling and swearing in a hysteria of hurry, we made for the lifeboats. But before we could get ready to lower them, she was upon us. Her keel struck violently against the rocks that made the rift echo like a hollow bell. Then she sank so quickly that she made me think of someone falling suddenly to their knees. Well, how did your boat get off the reef? Well, this will sound strange. The same volcanic convulsion which brought the old wreck to the surface also produced the reef on which we had grounded. And that reef also sank again when the old hull smashed against it. And our boat was free. But you didn't find your treasure island? No. We repaired our shaft, but no persuasion or threads could uh, induce the superstitious sailors to proceed with the trip. They got out of hand, and rather than a mutinous crew, we limped back to port. A few hours after we had cast anchor off the front and discharged our crew... The legend of the ghost ship was in every sailor's boarding house, in every seaman's dial. And that is why no pilot will take the baiter out, no stoker feed her boilers, no sailor walk her deck. The baiter will never smell the sea again. She has seen a ghost. I am super.
superstition. You don't believe, do you? Ha 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 ha!